I want a baby. I mean, I don't want to give birth to one, I just want to have one. Like, sometimes I go to the mall and I see a random woman's baby, and I consider taking it. I love babies too much. Sometimes I just see a baby, and I become so overwhelmed with joy that I burst into tears. On one occasion when I was particularly over-emotional, a friend of mine called me the most inconsiderate name I had ever heard. Crybaby. I was offended. Not only because the intent was to insult me, but also because the word itself implies a negative connotation with babies. <laughs> and what's the big deal about crying anyway? I cry. I mean, I guess I cry a lot, but... I cry all the time, actually. I cry when I'm stressed or I laugh too hard. I cry when I watch sad movies or happy movies. Scary movies, any movie, really. <laughs> Commercials, too. Really anything inspirational. <laughs> Particularly with babies. The E-Trade talking baby, adorable. The one with the baby's roller skating, hilarious. Tears everywhere. <laughs> yeah, my habit of crying is actually rather obnoxious. But over time, I've decided that I don't care. Because tears are nothing to be ashamed of. Yet somehow, our society has decided to view crying as a weakness rather than the valid form of release that it is. So, in order to change this baby, we will first examine and invalidate our premature opinions on crying. Next, we will consider the poopy alternatives. And finally, we will come up with the formula needed to nurse us back to health. Once we can roll over and sit up, we can see that crying is supposedly for the weak and the young not the strong and mature. However, the act of emotional crying is proven to be beneficial. Dr. William H. Fry, biochemist at the St. Paul Ramsey Medical Center in Minnesota, found that emotional tears release high percentages of toxic substances and adrenocorticotropic hormone, the human body's primary stress hormone, which makes perfect sense. Crying is an exocrine process just like exhaling, sweating, and urinating. It's all gotta come out somehow. And if it doesn't, you should probably get that checked. Especially the breathing thing. My point is, let it all out. Evidence shows that suppressing tears is detrimental to emotional and mental health. One study conducted at Marquette University even suggests that tear suppression actually causes stress-related illnesses. Crying is a necessary part of the healing process that simply cannot be avoided. The Twitter parody account called Honest Toddler describes it like this. Stop crying? Oh, okay, let me find the button that turns off my feelings. I mean, really, telling someone like me to quit crying would be like telling Taylor Swift to quit dating boys. Love her, though or like telling my speech coach to quit drinking coffee. She tried once. It was a hard time for everybody. <laughs> Some things you just can't quit, and crying should be one of them. What we can't seem to understand is that holding back tears won't make us any stronger, but letting the tears out will leave us happier and healthier than before. Now, as we crawl to our destination, we will weigh our options and see if we can fully understand the acceptability of crying. When we experience stress or grief, we can either use defensive coping or active coping. Defensive coping ignores or denies the problem through aggression, substance abuse, self-harm, or complete withdrawal. Active coping, on the other hand, acknowledges and addresses the problem in a healthy way through exercising, deep breathing, or even crying. I choose to cry because I'm too lazy to work out. 
Now, developmental psychologist Christia Brown, PhD, explains that emotions don't evaporate. They have to be expressed somehow. And since crying is frowned upon, aggression becomes not only an acceptable behavior, but the most common alternative. We are even told to man up, to fight like a man. On August 3rd, 2012, Aaron Talley of the Black Youth Project beautifully articulated this concept, explaining that we begin to associate the masculine with anger, aggression, and alienation, while constructing derogatory versions of femininity. When we are taught that being feminine and having feelings is weak and unnecessary, we are ultimately being taught to alienate one another to stop caring about each other. When put next to violence, tears don't seem so pathetic. One woman who supports this idea, Victoria Pynchon of Forbes magazine, says about her family, we're Irish, we cry, but we're also known for throwing a good punch when we're angry. So tears are actually a step toward maturity. It's about knowing ourselves well enough to understand which option is the most healthy, tantrums or tears. Now, I know that for me, crying is the better option, but it took me a while to figure that out. When I was a sophomore, I was teased for crying. And I know you're all waiting for the big sob story, the big tear jerker, but I don't want that. I want you to consider what I have to say. Well, a few months ago, I found out that a young girl I know was in a similar situation, being picked on by some older boys. Now, I knew that these boys, being two years younger than I am and some of my best friends, weren't trying to be mean. They thought they were just teasing her like friends do. But having been on the other side, I felt like I had the opportunity to change their mind. So I went straight to the boys and tried to logically explain to them what it feels like. But they wouldn't get it. They just kept defending themselves and refused to understand what I was saying. It was so frustrating and the terrible memories started flooding back so quickly that I started crying, sobbing uncontrollably. Through my tears, I told them about how the little comments add up how they make you hate yourself, how you start to have thoughts that teenage girls should never have, and how you want to cry, but you can't because you have to be strong. And right then, I saw a change in their eyes. All of a sudden, they just got it. In that moment, I realized that my tears could explain so much more than my words ever could. I know now that tears are not manipulative. Tears bring understanding. They spark this connection between people that cannot exist in any other situation. So then why do we fight that? Because we are told from the start that tears are for the weak. But since we know that's not true, let's show them just how strong we can be. First, throw out that dirty diaper and wipe away any preconceptions you may have had about crying. I understand this is a crappy analogy, but bear with me, people. <laughs> Crying is not embarrassing, it is empowering. There are clear physical benefits and these insults are so outdated that we don't need to believe them anymore. Second, we must be accepting of others' emotions. Once again, the brilliant Dr. Fry has the answer. He says that we should comfort people without telling them to stop crying. They do stop crying when they're comforted. When we witness someone else's tears, we should not make them feel guilty or judge them in any way. Often in the public eye is Representative John Boehner, who is known for his tendency to bawl irrationally and has recently been nicknamed the Weeper of the House. <laughs> While this is not meant to be complimentary, I'd like to think of it that way. This guy knows what's up. So don't be a bane or hater. I'm asking you to look at his tears and be inspired. Because finally, we must be open to our own emotions. So go ahead, cry your heart out. Be like Boehner. Although he is not the only politician to have cried in public. Hillary Clinton in 2008, 
Senator Ed Muskie in 1972, and Abraham Lincoln way before that. In fact, every single U.S. president since Ronald Reagan has shed a tear in front of his people. We can learn a lot from these guys. Now, I'm not saying we need to force ourselves to cry, but for crying out loud, we can't be afraid to. So the next time you find yourself choking back tears, puke that sucker up because it feels good. <laughs> and if you're not the emotional type, that's fine. I just ask you to respect everyone else's emotions. You know, not many people know this, but human beings are the only creatures on Earth that can cry emotional tears. I mean, it's not like you see trees crying, right? Then again, there's sap, which explains the term sappy. Whatever, crying literally makes us human. So let's vow to be a human. We will no longer be afraid or ashamed of crying. And when this emotional barrier breaks, the tears will fall. But we'll get rid of crybaby, cradle and all.